Okay, so in the last video, we spoke about multifactorial traits. Remember that they are caused by multiple factors, dictated by multiple factors, which include uh, many genes, often at least three or four, and then environmental factors as well. We gave some examples, skin color, height, and here are some other examples, diabetes, cleft lip, cleft palate, and club foot. There are also a type of multifactorial traits where they are called threshold multifactorial traits. And what that means is that you have to hit a threshold of um, genetic liability for the phenotype to be seen. So if you don't hit that threshold, like over in this side of the graph, that phenotype won't be seen at all. And so it seems like a discontinuous trait because it seems like there's just two distinct phenotypes, but there's not. It is a multifactorial continuous trait. It's just that there's a threshold for the phenotype to be seen at all. And there could even be a range within that um, upper threshold. Examples of this would be cleft lip and club foot. So complex traits can be really hard to determine whether they are genetic or whether they have a genetic component to them and whether they don't. Um, some examples of this are a lot of those topics that many of you chose for your disease research paper. You know, some of these have genetic components to them. Some of them can be um, come arise from different environmental factors, for example. But we're going to talk about how scientists can figure out whether a trait has a genetic component to it or not. And what they can use are twin studies. So twin studies can help us figure out if a trait is genetic or if it's not. First off, there are two types of twins. Um, monozygotic twins are called mono because they come from one embryo. They come from one sperm and one egg. So one embryo splits into two at the very beginning, and then those end up being two separate but genetically identical embryos. These are identical twins. The second type here are dizygotic twins, and the word di sounds for two, stands for two. So these come from two different zygotes, two different sperm, and two different eggs. What happens is in the mother, there happens to be an event where she releases, she ovulates twice. She ovulates two separate ovum. And then if those ova both get fertilized by two separate sperm, we have dizygotic twins. This is what fraternal twins are. Fraternal twins, by the way, are really similar to just siblings, right? Just your regular siblings because these are coming from two separate zygotes and they share about half of their genes, just like any typical sibling would. So questions for you to think about, how many of your genes do you share with your mom? How many genes do you share with your dad? And how many genes do you share with your siblings? Um, hopefully you can answer the first two at least. With your mom, you have about 50% of your mom's genes, right? Because you have half of your chromosomes from mom, half of your chromosomes from dad. So 50% of your genes you share with mom. 50% of your genes you share with dad. And then on average, it's also about 50% of genes shared with your siblings. This can be higher or lower in different events, you know, depending on independent assortment, for example. But on average, it's about 50%. So what about twins? How many genes do twins share? Hopefully the first question of monozygotic twins is easy, 
monozygotic twins are identical, so they share 100% of their genes. Dizygotic twins, like we said, they are similar just to your typical sibling pair, and so they're gonna share about 50%. And so this is going to help us because we can use these twin studies to figure out if traits are genetic or not. When traits, when twins have the tr same trait, that is called concordant. When they do not have the same trait, that is called disconcordant. So if a trait is purely genetic, meaning no environmental influence whatsoever, if it is a purely genetic trait, we would expect 100% concordance in monozygotic twins and at least 50% concordance in dizygotic twins. What that means is if it's a purely genetic trait, 100% of our monozygotic twins are all going to share that same trait and at, le at least 50% of our dizygotic twins will share that same trait. So using these concordance numbers, we can figure out if a, tra if a trait has a genetic component to, or doesn't. If it does have a genetic component, there's going to be a higher zygotic, I'm sorry, higher concordance level in monozygotic twins than dizygotic twins. What that means is that monozygotic twins are going to be more likely to share the same trait because they share more of the same genes. If it is not a genetic trait, we wouldn't expect a difference. We would have about the same concordance in monozygotic and dizygotic twins. So what that means is that, you know, the monozygotic twins, even though they share more of the same genes, it's not gonna impact whether they share this trait or not. And so that shows that this trait is not genetic. So we can look at some concordance values of monozygotic and dizygotic twins. And you can take a look here really quickly, but let's just look at blood type. For blood type, monozygotic twins have 100% concordance, whereas dizygotic twins have 66% concordance. These numbers tell us that monozygotic twins share the same blood type. Dizygotic twins, about 66% are going to share the same trait. And so this tells us is that it is a genetic trait. And then let's look at something like handedness. Handedness, monozygotic twins have 79%, while dizygotic twins have about 77%. This may not be purely genetic, right? This may not, may not be genetic because the concordance levels are about the same. 